Hi everyone and welcome to the weekly update with me, Richard Perry, Market Analyst at Handtech Markets. Each week I'll take you through the key events that I believe will be driving your investments in the coming days. Certainly moving into this week, the key non-farm payrolls report that we got out last Thursday has still got a legacy in this market. Certainly the equity markets have pushed higher, so has the dollar and also sovereign bond yields as well. Now that would suggest that the market is focusing on the growth aspect of this payroll support rather than the impact it could have on uh, Fed tightening. And um, what we're looking at is the, uh, is the impact throughout this week on that with uh, the equity markets up at key levels and also the dollar reaching key uh, levels as well. So we need to be really looking at that throughout this week. Now the key events have also been driving this oil price. That um, Iraq uh, the geopolitical tensions in Iraq have certainly pushed oil price higher in recent weeks, but that's sort of calmed down a little bit in the recent few days. And uh, coming out of the headlines has just generally taken the edge off that oil price. It's coming back down towards that key level around $110 again on the Brent crude. Now that has certainly improved the risk sentiment in the equity markets as well, and again helped the equity markets higher. Okay, so in the Forex markets, that strong payrolls report has, as I said, strengthened the dollar, and that's brought euro dollar back down through some key supports, and now back to the key pivot level around one dollar thirty-five eighty-five. Now, I think that's a bit of a line in the sand at that level. Anything below there will quickly, I think, move back down towards one dollar thirty-five big figure. Uh, but anything, any sort of support around that one thirty-five eighty-five level, we'll see a bit of a trading band, I think, up towards thirty. $1.3640 and possibly $1.3670 which is also a key level. So a little bit of trading range possibly on the euro this week. In terms of cable, again the uh, UK in, uh, economic data has been very strong and pushing cables uh, significantly higher. However that payroll support on Thursday just took a little bit of the edge off that, uh, off that cable rally and we're seeing a bit of a consolidation at the moment. $1.71 seems to be a key near-term floor, as if you broke below that you'd complete a small top pattern that would actually bring you back down towards $1.7030 again. But I still see that any dips in cable are a nice long, uh, opportunity to buy there. Dollar Yen still seems to be trading around that pivot level at 102 big figure. A little bit higher, a little bit lower, and it's uh, fairly neutral at the moment. Not really showing any signs of any direction, and it's fairly difficult to trade. But it seems to be that that 102 pivot level seems to be where it continues to come back towards. In terms of the other FX majors, we're still looking at that 90, uh, 93.20 level on the Aussie dollar, and that's again a nice pivot level um, that, the, uh, that the dollar is now testing. So that's a, a key level that we're going to be looking at as well this week. Okay, so in the, uh, in the indices, certainly, as I said, the equity markets have been pushing higher. The S&P 500 broke out to another strong all-time high, uh, looking a little bit overbought, but still looking very strong. Now, the European equity markets have not been pushing as strongly higher. They're actually finding a little bit of resistance still underneath their key highs, with the DAX struggling at that uh, 10,050 mark and also the FTSE 100 under 6,895. So those are two key levels that we're looking at this week for possible breakouts. But I think that certainly the S&P 500 being overbought and has been uh, generally the driver of these markets will begin to possibly find a little bit of a correction or a consolidation and um, that might see the, these indices in the European side struggle. On the flip side of that, we do have earnings season that starts off this week. Alcoa on Tuesday and also Wells Fargo, the first of the big banks, on Friday. So we'll get a bit more of a focus on the corporate angle and uh, certainly the um, markets will be looking at how the corporates are performing on the top line, the revenue, and also on their outlook statements. So we'll, we'll get a, begin to get a gauge of how good that uh, employment data that we've had throughout Q2 is actually filtering through into the Q2 numbers for the uh, for the corporates. In terms of gold price, what we're looking at in gold is that uh, there has been a, um, a bit of a consolidation period as well. As I said, with that strengthening of the dollar, the gold price has just started to uh, trade a bit of a sideways band, and that's between 1306 and 1332. Now that 1306 is a bit of a key near-term floor because there's not a great deal of support until you get back down towards 1280. So uh, it, it would need to hold above there for the gold bulls to remain in control.
Okay, so throughout this week we've got a little bit of um, data to be looking at, not a huge amount, but uh, certainly markets will be focusing on uh, the UK manufacturing production because in that report you get the spare capacity for the UK and that spare capacity has been something that the uh, Bank of England will be looking at as it is a driver of potential inflation further down the road. Additionally, we've got Swiss CPI. You've also got uh, on Wednesday the, um, the Chinese CPI, but also the Fed meeting minutes. And that Fed meeting minutes is probably going to be the key report for the week. Certainly looking at how the Fed members have been voting on uh, in the recent FOMC meeting. But also through, through this week, we've got, uh, I think, five Fed members all speaking throughout the week. So we'll get a, more of a gauge on the, um, on the Fed's thoughts throughout this week. Moving into Thursday, we've also got the uh, Aussie unemployment and also the Chinese trade balance, but also the Bank of England uh, meeting as well. So a few things back towards the end of the week, but certainly I think that those FOMC meeting minutes will be the main focus. Okay, so thank you very much for listening. I hope I wish you good luck in your trading throughout this week and I will speak to you soon. Thank you.